Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is If Loving You Is Wrong, Season 4, Episode 10, and the name of this episode is A Dame in Distress. Yo, I'm so happy this show is back, because it definitely ended on a good note for me, so now that it's kicked back up, I'm like so here, so let me begin with this review. Alright, the first thing we see is Natalie and Lucian in bed. Natalie is waking up because she says she's heard gunshots. She go checks and she looks out the window and she sees Travis' car is outside. So she goes to wake up Lucian to let him know that you know we need to go see what we need, we need to go see what's going on with Kelly. Then we get a glimpse at Kelly's house. Travis has been shot the hell up. I mean the boy looks dead like roadkill, and you know Kelly is in complete shock. Like she literally has murdered someone and it's like she's like in a in a complete daze and she's so shook in that afterwards she just kind of goes back and then she ends up going into the room with Justice and gets in the bed with him Justice is awoken he's like is everything okay what's going on and she says everything's fine everything's going to be okay so we see that's going on inside Kelly's house Lucian pretty much says she's going to go and see what's going on. Natalie wants to come out. He told Natalie, stay your ass in the house. I'll be, you know, but, you know, um, just stay in the house. So he goes to um, to Kelly's house. He looks down and sees that there's blood coming from under the door. He tells Natalie, you know, call 911 and call the ambulance. So that's where um, that began. So... Lucian is knocking on the door calling Kelly, but Kelly's not responding because Kelly's just not, Kelly's not there, mentally. So, he ends up breaking in, and you literally see him literally push, you literally push Travis' body, you know, at the bottom of the door. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden, he's calling Kelly's name, and all of a sudden, she comes out, shh, be quiet, Justice is sleeping. And it's like she's completely just, out of sight and out of mind. And he's asking her what happened, what's going on, you know, what happened to Travis? Like what what you know, what happened? And Kelly is just out of it. She's just like I I saw him at my window and he was tapping and I let him in and I I shot him and I just kept shooting and shooting, and shooting, and shooting. I'm like, she is done. Like, she is completely psyched out. But, yo, shout out to our dream love, Finley Dickinson. She really did some great acting in this episode. Because she really was just literally out of sight and out of mind. And um, Lucian lets her know, like, look. Um, he actually tries to call Anna. She's like, no, don't call him. Don't save him. I want him to die. I want him to die. <laughs> like, she was just out of it. But, good thing he calls Nat, but then he calls Nat, well, he calls, um, for, for help, but he comes to find out someone has already called, so Natalie has called the police and, and um, and the ambulance, you know, and, you know, uh, what ends up happening is that he tries to talk to Kelly, and Kelly's like, I shot him. I let him in, and I shot him. <laughs> and Lucian's like, look, the authorities are going to come over here. You cannot tell them that. Do not tell them that you opened the door and you shot him. You know, you need to just, you don't say that. But she's like, but she's like, but that's what happened. I shot him. I kept shooting <laughs> and and, and, and um, eventually Natalie comes over because you know Natalie hard headed as hell so Natalie came over she sees that Travis has been shot up and she's like oh my god but then um, Lucian lets her in and was like okay come in take Kelly and Justice and go and take her um, and you know take her to, to, to my house and you know, we'll deal with her there, you know, just, just get away, you know, because the authorities are about to be in here, and, you know, we shouldn't have her, you know, I'm going to actually, you um, know, he pretty much says that I'm going to have it taken care of, but I need you to get her and justice out of here. So, all of a sudden, she's like, I don't want to leave my house. 
is Justice coming with us? Like, she is completely gone. But Natalie gets, um, you know, pretty much gets Justice and Kelly out of there, and they go to, um, they go to, um, Natalie and Lucian's house. So then we see that, uh, what ends up happening is that, um, Lucian calls Ian. Ian's in bed, and I must say, he's looking good, you know, baby got a nice body. So, she ends up, he ends up calling um, Ian and lets him know that, look, um, Kelly shot Travis. I'm going to need you to get over here. And he's like, okay, fine, I'll be right over. But he, but he already knows it's going to be some shit because Travis' family is like the biggest client of Larry and Ian's firm. So, Lynn gets up and he's on his way over. Then we get a scene with Marcy and Brad. Remember, um, in the season finale, Brad went to help Marcy, you know, with her car. And, you know, she pretty much opens up the fact that she doesn't like the fact that she's not over him. So they get in the car and she's crying or whatever. And he's like, you know, why are you crying? And she's like, because I, I just feel like I'm a fool. Because here it is, I married a moron like Randall. And then I threw myself onto you. And she's like, I'm, I'm just a fool. And he's like, no, you're not a fool. You're human. But he says, but one thing I do want to tell you is that I do love you. But I love Alex, too. So it's just the timing's wrong. But then she asks, do you think the timing would ever be right? And he was like, I don't think so. But then all of a sudden his phone starts ringing and it's actually Alex. And she's like, you know what? She is just so jealous every time I'm around you. It's like she is just never going to... She's just going to always have a problem with me and you being around each other. And, you know, uh, and then she says that she... Uh, but then she also spills the beans and lets him know that, um, that um, Alex has threatened to tell Randall um, that I'm pregnant. And... And, he, and he's like, Alex wouldn't do anything like that. Then she plays uh, um, a voicemail message that Randall's like, so what, did you pregnant? I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that Psycho Betty, I swear. <laughs> you, can't just, you can't get enough of Psycho Betty, because Psycho Betty and her antics, when, I'm just saying, like, you just like, so what is it, did you pregnant? Like, how are you going to leave a message like that on somebody's answer in the street? So, and she's like, now, how would he know about that? You know, how would he know about that unless Alex went over there? So this immediately begins to rub Brad the wrong way. So he's like, oh, I'm going to get to the bottom of this shit. But then the phone kept ringing. So eventually he answered it, and it is Alex. And he's like, Alex, what the hell is going on? I'm on my way home. He's like, look. She's like, you need to hurry up and get here. There have been gunshots. Um, there, I've heard gunshots, and police are here. You need to get here now. So... Him and Marcy pretty much drive, and they end up coming there. Next we see, um, next we, um, we're at, you know, um, Natalie and Lucian's house. Esperanza is there with Kelly, and Kelly literally is just freaking out. She's like, look, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. And then she's just like... I want him to die. He deserves to die. And then she starts screaming and everything. And I'm like, wow, she is really playing this role. Like, she is just really out of it. And, you know, and then she's saying that, I can't believe this. I, I, could, lo I could lose my job and my credit's bad. And, you know, he raped me. And she's like, and then Esperance like, he raped you? She's like, yeah, the time I told you that he was coming over, you know, I wasn't honest. He actually raped me. And I'm like, she's just really talking crazy. I mean, he's assaulted her a few times, but I don't know if he's actually raped her. But, you know, he's tried, though. So you might as well say so. But, you know, and so eventually, you know, um, Natalie's like, okay, we can say that this is self-defense. That's what this is. It's self-defense. But then Esperanza's kind of thinking, I don't know about all that. Because 
if she's because you know Esmeralda works for the police department, so she knows you know somewhat you know somewhat the one on one and how the police see things. So okay, then pretty much you know we see the police and everybody's outside. Um, Lucian's out there, and then eventually we see um, Brad and Marcy show up, and we see Alex eventually comes up too, because um, pretty much they all asked what's going on, and they said that, you know, uh, that uh, Kelly shot Travis. So Marcy decides to go over to Lucian's house with the girls to um, be there for Kelly, and then all of a sudden we see Alex comes out of nowhere, well, well, actually not out of nowhere, she actually comes out from next door, and she pretty much is like, uh, yeah, um, yeah, she's like, yeah, I, I heard gunshots, and Brad was like, how many? She's like, I don't know, but I heard enough, but I don't know what's going on, and that's when, you know, she finds out that, yeah, because I think, um, Lucian, Lucian, when Lucian mentioned that, um, Kelly shot Travis, um, Alex was there along with, you know, Marcy and Brad, but Marcy ends up going to check on Kelly. The same thing Alex should have done, but since Alex is a selfish bitch, she's not even thinking about that. I mean, but then, you know, of course, you know, Brad, being the kind of guy he is, he's like, you know, well, good thing that nobody else got hurt. I mean, we have children in this neighborhood and all that, but he doesn't know the full extent of what's been going on between Travis and Kelly like everyone else. So he's completely oblivious to it, and I don't think, and I think Alex doesn't know much about it either, you know. So it was like he's kind of having that reaction, like, "Well, it's a good thing that no one's got hurt, and that that um, no other child's involved, and and all of this shit." So, so we see that going on. Then we see Brad and Alex get back into the house, and he and she's like, "It's so sad," and he said, "No, what's sad is your ass," and she's like, "Excuse me." He's like, what are you doing telling Randall that Marcy's pregnant? And she says, I didn't say that. She's like, well, why would Randall leave a message on on um, Marcy's phone saying, asking her if she's pregnant or not? So you went over there and you said something. And she's like, look, I'm telling you I didn't go over there. You know, I'm telling you the truth. And he's like, are you sure about that? And then she's like, look, are we going to continue to, are we going to be doing this now? And he's like, doing what? She's like, you know, when I tell you I'm telling you the truth and you're still going to kind of like, you know, decide whether you're going to believe me or not. Are we really going to do this? And then Brad, Brad was like, do you really want to go down this road right now? I'm like, there you go, Brad. Check our ass. And, and she's like, look, I'm letting you know that I didn't go tell him, you know, I'm telling you the truth. Do you believe me? And Brad is like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm like, Alex, you have literally did so much fucking lying. You're always, he's always in the back of his mind is going to question everything you say because you lied before. This, don't you understand that when you tell lies, you literally have to earn that trust back because that trust has been broken? Yeah, he's back with you now, but you got to earn that trust back, sweetie. And that's the problem with Alex as that she don't want to take responsibility for her own shit. But, um, so we see that go on. Finally, Ian shows up, and we see him and Lucian talks, and, you know, pretty much they talk, and, she, and like, you know, Lucian tells Ian that she shot him, he's like, you know, um, she pretty much says that, um, and, but, but then, you know, uh, I'm sorry, so, but then Ian pretty much says that you know this is not going to end well for her because his parents are like the biggest clients of our firm. He has a big family church, and he's got nothing but judges and lawyers in his congregation. So that explains how Travis was able to railroad her with the police. That explains it. So it's like, yeah, shit's about to get crazy for Kelly, even more so. Because they pretty much, um, pretty much, um, Lucian found the post on Travis, so Travis is is pretty much hanging for dear life. But if he dies, it can it's really going to be bad. But it's going to be bad either way, <laughs> you know, because 
now that their, ch their child got shot down, oh yeah, you know they're coming for it. So, so pretty much we see that Ian finally goes over to Lucian's house where all the ladies are there, and she's pretty much saying, I shot him. I shot him. I, I shot him. And he's like, okay, well, you know, we, we, we're going to talk about this. But um, he asks the ladies to leave, and they do, and then he decides to sit there and talk to Kelly. Then we get a glimpse over at Randall's house. Him and Larry are drunk, are drunk as shit, knocked out on the couch with each other. And then we see Eddie is literally strapped up, you know, chained up in the room. And what he ends up doing is that he ends up, you know, using his feet to get to his phone. And he ends up, and he has, and he has, a, and um, he pretty much has the has the um, phone, you know, um, you know, voice activated, so he can just speak into the phone. And he pretty much says, "Dial that bitch," and that bitch is is Lucian. <laughs> so the last person you wouldn't think he would call, that's the person he ended up calling because he's chained up at Randall's house, and he needs help. And the person he ends up calling is Lucian. So he's like, "Dial that bitch." And then, like, Lucian's seeing the phone, and um, he's outside with, um, with all the ladies and everything, and, um, you know, Esperanza, and, you know, they're, they're pretty much talking about Kelly's situation, but he keeps trying to call, and, and at first, Lucian is just like, man, I ain't talking to this fool. Look at this. So, they go back to talking, and, you know, uh, pretty much, um, you know, um, now it's like, well, everything's going to be okay, because we can just say it's self-defense. And then that's when Ron's like, well, not necessarily, because, and, and she's like, well, why not? And then Lucian said, well, she actually opened the door and let him in. He didn't break in. She let him in. And then she shot him. So, so, she, so she's like, well, I don't understand. How the hell did she get a, and then that's when I was like, well, I just don't understand. How the hell did she get a gun anyway? And Natty was like, well, <laughs> she already had one. And she said, yeah, but the, but that's in evidence. So how did she get another gun? She said, well, I gave her my gun. You know, she heard some noise in the background and come to find out it was just Ed. And she's like, what, Ed? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Ed was in Brad and Alex's backyard. So I just gave her the gun, you know, because it helped her to feel safe because she was afraid that Travis was going to come back. So... So, so pretty much, you know, now, so Esperanza's like, you, well, you know you can get in trouble behind this. And, um, <laughs> and then, like, Lucia's like, oh, we already know Natalie's in trouble, but she's going to be in more trouble if the boy dies. And she says, you think he's going to die? And Lucia's like, it doesn't look good. So, we see finally, um, after, you know, Eddie has constantly... Um, use the voice command on his phone. Dial that bitch! Dial that bitch! <laughs> and he finally, finally, um, Lucian answers like, what the hell is going on? He's like, man, I'm chained up at Randall's house. I need you to come up here to help me. And she's like, he's like, man, what kind of bullshit did you got yourself into now? He's like, look, I'm serious, man. I really need your help. You know, I'm, I'm up at, um, Randall's place. Um, they got me, him and this dude got me chained up or whatever. And I, I really need you. He's like, man, you know what? You know, I ain't got time for this, man. I got to go. And all of a sudden, he lets, you know, the ladies know that, you know, that was that was um, Eddie saying that he's chained up at Randall's house. And then Marcy kind of notices, what the hell is Larry's car doing here around this time of night? And, again, you know, what he ends up doing then is that Eddie decides to call Esperanza. He calls her, and he's like, Esperanza, help me. You know, help you? What the hell are you talking about? What do you want? And he's like, I'm chained up, uh, you know, um, let, you know, I'm actually chained up at Randall's house, and I need you to help me. She's like, you know what? I can't do this right now. Click. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, um, you know, she says that, yeah, um, that was just Eddie calling me. And, he, and, she, and she says that, yeah, he said the same thing, that he's tied up at Randall's house. So he's like, yeah, we, we need to go find out what's going on with that. And then Marsha's like, yeah, but I'm still wondering why the hell is Larry's car doing here? You know, I'm wondering, maybe that's who told Randall about me being pregnant. So 
they all decide to go over there. Marcia still has the key. Marcia uses the key, opens up the door. They she, they wake both of them up, and then all of a sudden, you know, Randall still as Psycho Betty, you know, starts with his bullshit. What the hell are you doing here? And all this shit. Get the hell out of my house. And blah blah blah. And then um, you know, Lucia's like, um, is there, um, is, is there somebody up in here chained up? And then Larry's like, look. Um, you don't have a warrant, so you don't have probable cause of being here to search for anything. You have rights. And I'm like, oh, Eddie is like... And it's like, and the thing about Larry, Larry is a smug-ass lawyer. Because he just got, like, that look like, you know, I'm a lot, like, you know, I'm a piece of shit and I know it. But as long as I win, I don't care. And he's just constantly saying that, look, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, hey... You don't have a warrant, you know, you just can't come up in here searching. And, but Lamar's just like, yeah, but I live here. I let him in. So if he wants to go search, he can do so. So eventually he's like, you know what? And he's, that, he's like asking them questions, and Larry's denying everything. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. And then, and then Randall's like, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know anything. And she's like, so you need to tell me no one's chained up upstairs. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, honestly, we don't know what you're talking about. You know, Larry's just playing straight dumb. But you can see in his face that, you know, that he's lying like shit. But he's like, at the end of the day, you can't do shit. So, Lucius decides to go up there to see what's going on. And he actually goes up there and sees that he's tied up. So then he comes back downstairs to question them more. Like, he is tied up. How the hell did he get like that? And they're like, we don't know. We don't know what the hell, how he got up there. It is what it is. Like, hey, <laughs> we don't know. So then the girls decide to go up there to check it out for themselves. They go up in there. They start freaking out when they see Eddie's tied up. And then all of a sudden, that's when Roger takes a picture. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, you're going to take a picture? Huh? Does this look like, oh, this is the best picture time for you? And she's like, hell oh, yeah, shit. And, like, got a picture of his ass, and they all rolled up out of it. I thought that was hilarious. So, he pretty much, so pretty much, Lucia's like, where's the key? And, and, like, you know, Larry's still trying to say, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, but after all, you don't have a warrant, so you really, you really have, like, you really, you know, have no probable cause and all of this shit. But then, um, Lucian lets them know, like, look, you better hope, that, like, just give me the damn key so I can let him out of here, but you better hope he doesn't want to press charges, because if he press charges, that's both of your asses. And Larry's like, oh, we know he's not going to press charges, and besides, you know, we weren't the ones who put him up there, he put himself up there. So, they, so he gets the keys, and he goes and unlocks, you know, he goes and actually, um, unlocks, he actually, um, you know, uh, helps Eddie loose, and um, Ed, so they pretty much unlock it, so pretty much, you know, Eddie's, Eddie's now free, <coughs> so he ends up coming downstairs with them, and then the two of them damn bitches, because I think they actually did do something to Eddie, because Eddie felt some kind of way, and then all of a sudden, he comes downstairs, and it's like, oh, there she is, the lady of the hour, you know, um, Sorry I kind of got a little rough with you, but you understand, don't you? And then all of a sudden you see Eddie's like, I was like, oh, they done played with your little hoe, huh? They decided to just, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> they probably did all kind of crap with him, and he couldn't do nothing because he, he was chained up. So they had their way with him, and then they went to sleep. <laughs> so all of a sudden he was like, Okay, all right, man. Cause, cause like before he took him down, he pretty much told, um, he pretty much told Lucian that you know I ain't gonna press no damn charges. I'm gonna get their asses back my way. He's like, you just ain't never, you just ain't gonna never be done with it, aren't you? He's like, you just ain't gonna never quit, are you? He's like, hell nah. I'm gonna get their asses back. I ain't pressing no charges. Fuck that. So when he told me he wanna press charges, he's like, oh, we knew he wasn't gonna press charges. I mean, after all, he's the one that put himself up there. We just decided to have a little bit of fun. Then all of a sudden he come down and 
they start talking they shit, calling them out, oh yes, the lady of the evening, damn, like, yes, the dame in distress, yes, like, just having so much fun talking shit, and then all of a sudden, you see that Eddie feels some kind of way, and then he pulls, uh, he pulls Lucia's gun, and just starts blasting that I was like, yo, shit, yeah, Eddie didn't like that at all. You done, cause they literally made Eddie their bitch, and Eddie was not gonna take that lie down. Like, Lucian, you should have known this fool trigger happy. You got the gun in your sweatpants and shit, and you ain't think he was gonna pull that shit and try to kill them? Oh, so he starts shooting, and you see Larry and Randall running. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, that was crazy. But yeah, this was a really good episode. Um, and that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. But, um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. They're listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of If Loving You Was Wrong. I have to say, you guys came back with a banger. So, until next time, everybody, take care.